So there are several uh, effects that we're not too happy with. Uh, the first one is property damage, right? Stone, metal, and wood. There are health problems. There's visibility decrease, forest degradation, and changes in surface water conditions. And we're going to go through each one of these individually. First off, property damage. I told you that one of the properties of acids that's interesting and important is that many uh, that acids are good at solubilizing metals. They're good at dissolving metals. What does that mean? Well, calcium is a metal, right? It's in the metal section of the periodic table. Calcium is a major component in limestone. We saw that with ocean acidification. And when you take limestone and you react it with acid, you can actually dissolve it. You get calcium ions, which are aqueous. You get CO2 gas, and you get HO2 liquid. I take solid, and I turn it into not solid. It dissolves away limestone so that your pretty statue doesn't have a face after a, n a number of years. It's also bad for um, iron, right? Iron is the main component in steel. And the bottom line is, when there's extra acid around, it combines with oxygen in the air and iron on your car, and it makes solids into non-solids. Once you make those ions, those iron ions react with more oxygen and more water. There's always plenty of water vapor in the air for this. And you make Fe2O3. You know this better as rust. Rust is not a good thing to have around. It's very damaging to your property. right? Acid rain, having extra acid in the atmosphere, dissolves stone and it rusts iron. What about health problems? Why is acid rain bad for health? First off, acid, um, I'm sure you've heard people talk about acid burns. Acid burns can also happen inside of you. If you breathe in vapor that contains H2SO4, or even breathe in SO2 vapor where it finds water in your lungs, your lung tissue gets attacked. When your lung tissue gets attacked by acid, that causes respiratory distress. People who are asthmatic or old or already ill or people who have a cardiovascular disease are going to notice this a lot more than healthy people, but it does uh, affect everybody. The other thing that's very interesting for health effects is that toxic heavy metals, so lead and cadmium and mercury, are found in rock. Sometimes you find them in things like limestone. And remember how I told you acid dissolves away rock? That's problematic if you've got heavy metals in it. Your acid wears away at that rock for long enough, and that lead, that cadmium, that mercury, all those heavy metals work their way out and into places, into our water sources, where it can become difficult for us and be can give us uh, a lot of uh, health problems. What about visibility decrease? Why does acid rain make it harder to see? So. SO2 and NO2 both are what are called hygroscopic. So hygro has to do with water. Scopic means absorbed. SO2, right, that's this molecule here, really readily absorbs water. Water sticks to it very easily. And the thing is that eventually out of that I get what are called aerosols. I get these liquid droplets suspended in gas of H2SO4 or nitric acid, so either acid. And these droplets get pretty big, so one micrometer in size. So basically you get your molecules with a whole bunch of water sticking to them, so you've got really big droplets suspended in the air. And the thing about aerosols is that they scatter sunlight. So sunlight doesn't pass through them, it bounces off and around them, and that causes it to look hazy to your eyes. The light isn't reaching your eye in the same way. It's scattered, and it's looking different, and that causes haze. What about forest deg degradation? How does acid rain lead to forest degradation? Well, the bottom line is it has to do with the extra nitrogen sources. We looked at the carbon cycle in uh, our chapter on climate change, and we said that, f that nature has things balanced out pretty well. When you release carbon, there's another source to take it back in. The same sort of thing happens with nitrogen. And I'm not interested in you knowing all of the ins and outs of the nitrogen cycle, but I do want you to know that if I feed N nitrogen in from any other source, so anthropogenic, then those extra sources can't be used by plants in the same way, right? 
They could end up in your water as acidic species, so they could take your surface water and make it more acidic. And they can also end up in the air eventually and get released and react to become acidic species and more acid rain. Lastly, let's look at surface water conditions. This particular diagram is set up for sulfur dioxide, but you could also imagine it for NO2 emissions from your car, for example. When I put that stuff in the air and it rains back down and it makes it down into the water, acid deposition into the water reduces water pH, right? The more acid I add to water, the more acidic it becomes, the lower the pH gets. And the bottom line is that a healthy lake has a pH somewhere between 6.5 and, and 9.5. And Every lake is unique, but 6.5 to 9.5 is okay. When the pH of a lake goes below 6, that's when the fish and plants start to disappear. It's too uh, acidic for them, it's hard to live there. By pH of 5, you've lost most of your aquatic life, and by pH of 4, you have a completely dead lake. And so the more acid rain we put into, or the more acid rain that falls from the atmosphere into our surface water, the uh, harder chance we're going to have of uh, having life survive in our lakes and our surface waters.